Prime just over there. There we go. You can see their heads sticking out. The resident hippo of Chitwa Chitwa Dam. And nice to see them. They do move around this dam a bit. The other day they were at this uh, at the tree that's right in the middle of the dam. They they always hang around here. And then um, now they've moved down close to that island. There's the tree that you can see just on the left hand side of the screen. That's where they usually sit and stick their heads out of water over there. And then um, we've got some Inyala moving in the background. You can see that. They're moving across the clearing. Some male Inyala. Nice to see them moving around in the clearings. And then um, we've got something else interesting that's out of the water at the moment, which I'm surprised because it hasn't been a warm day. Um, and I usually, usually they bask in the sun on uh, warm winter's days. But um, but this crocodile has decided to come out today, and it's been quite cool all day. But maybe still warming up a little bit. Look at that, it's a big crocodile on the bank. I enjoy seeing the crocodile, they're just so prehistoric. I love watching them and seeing them on the banks in winter. They do bask out of the water very often in, in winter, almost every day. Because the water temperature obviously drops quite a bit, so they need to get a bit of sunlight to keep their body warm. But as I said, there wasn't much today, so I'm surprised the crocodile was out. Maybe it was a bit warmer out of the water than it was in the water. Riti, you said they seem like a family. I'm assuming you mean the hippo. Um, they do indeed. It looked like there was some some youngsters there. We actually saw some young hippo there in this in this pod the other day. Two two very young hippo. You can see they rest their heads on one another. That looks like a big male to the left, just judging by the size of the head. That's out. It looks much larger than the other hippo. Vicky, the hippo definitely feels safer in the water than they do on land. Now, that is why um, with a lot of hippo incidents, incidences, um, they, because they do, they are responsible for a lot of human deaths. Now, the reason for that is because in parts of Africa, in rural parts of Africa, hippo are prominent along uh, rivers or dams, and people then go down and use the water either for fishing or for cleaning and... Um, and what happens is the people disturb the hippo and get between the hippo and the water. The hippo will basically run through the people. They run and bite them or maybe come out of the water if they feel very threatened. That's unusual because they feel safe in the water. That's why they run back to the water. So um, that's why the hippo are responsible for a lot of deaths because the people get too close to their habitat and they'll bite down and kill them, not not necessarily eat them, but they just kill them by opening their mouths and biting down. They've got huge, sharp teeth, and they're very, very powerful animals. Oh, Linda, you asked how large hippo pods are, but now that's um, it's tricky to say. Generally, you could get a pod of... Um, three or four but then you could get pods of 20 to 30 uh, in some parts of Africa when it starts drying up in the dry season the water obviously the water areas become far fewer and uh, the water level drops so hippos are then forced to share water holes a lot more than they usually would so then you can get pods of 40 or 50 hippo in certain areas I've seen that but that's mainly in times of drought but generally a pod is, oh, it, it varies, maybe maybe between 4 and 15 or so, I would 
say that's an average somewhere around there all depends on the size of the dam depends on the availability of food around Riti, you asked <laughs> how the hippos come out of the water because they can't swim. Well, Riti, they just walk out. Now, um, if you think of a dam, I, um, uh, sorry, just have a look off to our left quickly. Sorry, I just see some antelope running and it looks like some kudu. Just running quite quickly, but they've, uh, sorry, it's Yinyala, it's young Yinyala. Um, I just caught a glimpse of them running. They flashed their white tails and they all ran. It's a group of Vinyala, now they flash those white tails sometimes to follow one another if there is danger. That's the theory, is that the, the tail flash is a, a, a sign to show that they should follow one another away from danger. So they lift those tails up and they're bright white underneath. And when they are alarmed, that's exactly what these antelope do. A family of young Vinyala. There's a young male to the right. Looks like, yeah, you know, just see the start of his horns um, in that little group, and he's starting to turn a little bit darker uh, compared to the females there. There we go, you can just see those little horns starting. That's quite a quick, uh, just a quick sprint for them across the clearing. Uh, it's interesting. I don't know why they decided to do that. Uh, nothing's chasing them. And there's another Nyala coming down that's, that's just walking through the clearing. Anyway, Sariti, as I was saying, the hippo just walk out of the water. The, these water holes, they basically just slope in. So it's easy for them to walk out. Uh, that's all they do. It's the easiest way to get out of the, the dams or the water holes. Anyway, um, I think I'm going to get out of this area and go and find some more animals, hopefully. Let's head back to Tristan. 